11 million years ago, the Earth literally cracked open in the Oregon eastern area and lava poured out layer upon layer for many years. Sometimes this lava was in fairly thin layers, sometimes it was in very thick layers, but the lava poured out in layer upon layer until the land that you're standing on here actually rose in elevation by almost 2,500 feet. Eventually the land itself just cracked and there was fault lines formed and, and there was great uplifts where the lava cracked and, and parts of it were tilted upwards, which is what you're seeing here. This particular formation is part of the Albert Rim, a very famous geological area in eastern Oregon and part of the area that includes the Oregon Sunstone Mines and Plush and the Ponderosa Mine. This is a very historical area and it's an area that has the lava flows in layers and within these layers you can see as you travel throughout the Oregon area here in eastern Oregon you can see how these layers are, are exposed and sometimes they're exposed in very thin layers, sometimes thick layers but the interesting thing about this lava is that it contains a very unique formation of feldspar crystals and these feldspar crystals actually formed deep in the magma chamber and there was copper in the area where they formed and the copper actually diffused into the crystals and formed the very rare Oregon sunstone that you see here and because of the rarity and beauty of it it has created a whole market for gemstones in Oregon and some beautiful jewelry stores have opened and sells exclusively or very exclusively such as Douglas Jewelry at Bend, Oregon this amazing gemstone. The real story of Oregon Sunstone, of course, is the people who mine it. The miners that are out there on the high desert, very far away from civilization, have worked for many decades to create the mines, to create the market, and to help establish Oregon Sunstone to be the viable and, and, and beautiful gemstone that it is. Here we have John Aldrich from the Double Eagle Number 16 mine, one of the more famous mines that are out there. John is a Native American. He has created the Double Eagle Number 16 name because of the incredible quality of Oregon Sunstone that the mine produces. In the middle you see his wife Debbie here, Rich on the right. These folks have worked very hard to help establish and create the Oregon Sunstone market that you're going to find. And you're going to find that it's an amazing market that has huge potentials. But the wonderful thing about the Double Eagle Mine, it has produced this particular gemstone that has become quite famous within the ISG because of the optical properties and you can see here the dichroism that is a very classic optical property of Oregon Sunstone. The Double Eagle number 16 mine is one of the, the famous mines for producing these very unusual qualities. The most famous mine in Oregon has to be the Dust Devil Mine. This mine has produced so many award-winning gemstones that cutters and designers have created and, and won so many awards with and the folks out there work so hard to take care of people and to make sure that everyone has a, a wonderful experience when they go out to the Dust Devil Mine. I will tell you this that the, the partners Don Buford and, and Terry Clark are just the most wonderful people you'll ever meet and be able to work with. They deal with a lot of hardships, they deal with a mining environment out there that's just very difficult but they're straight shooters, honest people and quite frankly I love going out there and working with them and staying with them because they're such great people to work with. But beyond that, they have such a, a fantastic setup. They have a beautiful optical sorter, and I say beautiful because it cuts out so much work of the mining because it uh, just they do all the, the digging and bringing out of the material, and you can sit there at the belt and watch everything come down. It, it's, a, it's an amazing experience, and it, it's an amazing experience for anybody who loves gemstones in general. But for those of you who do cutting, and particularly for a lot of the AGTA Spectrum Award winners, the material that this mine produces is just phenomenal. It is just the most classic textbook examples of the wonderful gemstones produced by this copper-bearing feldspar coming out of this basaltic rock. I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time out there with these folks, and they are absolutely the most trustworthy, the most fun, the most willing to take care of people and their mind produces what can only be described as world-class standard for Oregon Sunstone and it's just an amazing operation out there run by some absolutely amazing people. 
The folks out at the Ponderosa mine have it a lot easier. They have a forest. This particular mine location is, is located up in a national forest, a couple, couple hours away from the plush mining area. John Woodward and his people do a really good job up there. This mine is actually owned by shareholders. It is not open for fee digging. I did get an invitation to come up there and see it, and they do an incredible production up there. They're fortunate because they do have a water source, and they do a lot of work with the local economy. They actually employ a lot of local Native American folks that uh, help come in and sort and pick through and find the Oregon Sunstone coming out of this particular mine there in Ponderosa. It's an amazing location. These are wonderful people. The mine itself is producing a lot of what you're seeing out there commercially for Oregon Sunstone. We were fortunate enough to go out to the Sunstone Butte mine before it was closed to fee digging. The commercial buyers came in and are now literally buying everything that they can produce out of this mine because the material is so incredible. There's a lot of green color coming out of here, a lot of big intense colors, and now the commercial guys are buying everything they have. So fee digging is no longer available at Sunstone Butte. But Dave and Tammy out there are just such fantastic people, and they are operating the mine to this day. And quite frankly, if you ever get a chance to meet them, they're, they're just a wonderful group to meet that are out there. They gave me a tour of the mine area, the location, and kind of showed me how that's a little bit different than some of the other mine locations. But the material being produced out of this mine is just fantastic. The dichroic colors, the intense greens, this mine is one of the best mines out there and some of the some of the finest materials coming out of this mine. Unfortunately, the commercial buyers are buying up everything they can produce, so fee digging is not going to be available. The Spectrum mine is the only mine out there that is a patented mine, which means it is owned by an individual, Chris Rose, and not on the Bureau of Land Management land. The unique beauty and uniqueness of Oregon Sunstone is due to the presence of copper. Copper entered the crystals down in the magma chamber and brought with it optical properties that are quite unique in the gemstone world. This is one classic example. I'm going to show you two pictures of the same stone. The teal green that you see in this double eagle number 16 stone, we turn it and it turns orange. There's no lenses or anything else. This is just the optical properties of this gemstone to go from green to orange. And it's an amazing optical property that only the Oregon Sunstone has. The other thing about it is that they're all different. All the Oregon Sunstones are different because the way the copper in, in included itself into each crystal, it was all different. The, 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 the diffusion of the copper itself into the crystals is all different for each crystal. So each crystal is unique to itself. And the copper, when it entered the crystal, it all went to the center. So you've got that red center and usually a colorless or perhaps a green if you have oxidation on the outer edges. The colors themselves can vary widely. There's been an effort to create a master set, that's what you're looking at here, to deal with colors that run from 1A to 4A. Looking at A here, the AA colors has a little bit more of a, a color intensity. You've got a little more saturation of the color. And then as you move up the scale, you can see a more intense color, and these of course has to do with the fancy reds. These are the, the red colors that you see. The actual Oregon Sunstone is going to look at in just a minute. But as we move up the scale here to the top, you can see a very intense red color. You've got some Schiller in there. You've got some copper that you can see in there because the high copper creates the intense red color. The Schiller this is the Schiller. This is actually copper. It's actually copper that is so, there's so much copper in it that it, you actually get a copper look to it. And you can actually see copper grains in here. And sometimes these stones are cut into some amazing gemstone pieces by the designers who really are good at cutting this material. And the copper can be from very small grains, even to some very large ones. And many of these stones become collector's items simply because of the size and distribution of copper inside the gemstone. The classic and traditional Oregon Sunstone, the sun itself is the brilliance of what we call the champagne or the yellows or the colorless. The brilliance of these stones, because of the optical properties of the feldspar, is the, the, the source of the name Oregon Sunstone. To better understand the properties, we want to take a look at this piece by John Dyer. This is a, a custom piece that was designed by John Dyer. 
And if we put this into an immersion cell, you can actually see that in spite of it being green, there's still that red core to it, that red copper core. And the green is due to oxidation. As the oxidation occurs on the outer edges of that copper deposit, it just will turn green like any other copper, like the Statue of Liberty in the U.S. And you get that greenish look to it on the outside. There's a stone out that's claimed to be from, from Tibet, Tibet Andesine, and you notice it's different. It's totally reversed, and that is one of the optical properties that tells us that Tibet Andesine is a fake because, quite frankly, this is an optical property of true copper in a natural gemstone that cannot be duplicated. I want to show you a demonstration of just how amazing this is and just what an amazing optical property this is and how unique it is to the Oregon Sunstone. We're going to go back to this stone and we're looking at this through a, a London dichroscope. This is the stone from the double eagle number 16, the rather famous stone that shows such strong dichroism. I want to show you this in the microscope. What we've done here is taken, this is one of our first test shots we took. We had an old London dichroscope that we used but you're seeing the optical property of dichroism in this stone, the teal green to the orangey red. And what you're seeing here is real time. This is an optical property that you will find in very few gemstones, and you will not find this color combination in any other gemstone in the world. You will not find this reaction like this in any gemstone except the Oregon Sunstone. And I wanted to take us some footage from one of our very first, first testings of the Oregon Sunstone, and particularly this particular double eagle number 16 stone, that we get the same reaction from Dust Devil and from the other mines. This one is an example that we have that I thought would be fun to share and an important example of the optical properties. The beauty of the Oregon Sunstone is second to none in the world. It's an amazing set of circumstances that had to come together for this gemstone to even form. Down deep in the magna chamber, there happened to be copper available to it, and this copper has imparted so many different colors, so many different combinations, and such different and unique optical properties that it makes it truly an amazing gemstone that is truly unique. But there's more to the story than that. The most important part of this story, having experienced this for so many years, is the people. The people that have worked so hard to develop this market, to, to develop the, the concept and awareness of the Oregon Sunstone to be such an amazing and beautiful gemstone, these folks have worked so hard out in the very difficult conditions to create this market over decades. When you go out there and, and, and you'll see the, the, the dark suntans, you'll see the rough hands, you'll see the, the calloused hands, you'll see people that have worked their hearts out for many years to create a market for an absolutely amazing gemstone that had to be quite literally started from scratch. When they began the mining out there, there was no recognition in the world about this gemstone. Nobody really knew it. Nobody understood it. Not only did these folks have to get out there and mine it, they had to help create a market for it and get it out there and be sold. One of the most, I think, amazing designers of this material is Carla Proud. Carla has done such wonderful things with Oregon Sunstone and her Desert Fire creations are, they're sold worldwide. Cruise lines, gemstone stores, everything around the world, you'll find Carla Proud Designs, and that is a name that you should look for if you go out looking for Oregon Sunstone. And perhaps in addition to this, we need to say that if you look at a who's who list of gemstone cutting competitions like the AGTA Spectrum Awards, or anywhere in the world that you look at the gemstone cutting and design competitions, you're going to see Oregon Sunstone there. The unique optical properties of Oregon Sunstone is the reason that so many world-class designers use it to create their award-winning designs. From the champagne yellows to the intense reds, the optical properties of the Oregon Sunstone, coupled with the very unique colors that it can produce, make for award-winning designs for so many designers around the world. So if you want to own a gemstone that is truly unique and truly rare in the world and has a truly unique beauty, you want to own the Oregon Sunstone.